morning, YouTuber people, uh, humans. <laughs> I, I'm shooting a video out the back window, the uh, door wall window of the uh, rental property that I manage. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because, well, it's off season right now. And uh, what that means is that there's nobody renting here. And so I figured I'd come over here, hang out at the rental property, and, uh, you know, toss a, a few logs in the stove. Yeah, we, we call it a stove, not a fireplace, even though it is a place for fire. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I know the lighting is atrocious in here right now because I just woke up. It's time to have a cup of coffee. Don't mind if I do. Oh, yeah. So, normally I would like to um, promote this place, this rental property, but it, it appears as though the owners are going to be moving in here soon. So, in the meantime, I'm going to uh, kind of hang out, fix things, make things really nice and pretty for them um, to the best of my ability in this castle-like home. So, have a cup of coffee with me and enjoy the morning. We'll be right back right after my very fancy intro here on YouTube. Okay, well, welcome back to my channel, as I stated before that big fancy introduction. Uh, and about that big fancy introduction, that guitar music is uh, actually performed by a huge YouTube... <laughs> All right, that... Uh, oh, man, I didn't mean to sound like him. <laughs> um, it, uh, a very popular YouTube uh, creator named Steve Willis, who has a channel called... Camping with Steve, I think, and uh, <clears throat> his channel, uh, he does a lot of stealth camping. Fun stuff. Sometimes he sleeps on a uh, on the ground in the woods somewhere, or in a tent, or in an old uh, dilapidated factory. He, he does all kinds of weird stuff. So uh, check out Steve Willis's uh, Camping with Steve video. <clears throat> very fun. Very fun stuff. So today, uh, today... <laughs> I'm talking about um, this trend uh, because I am in the YouTube um, nomad road life, van life, all that stuff. I'm in that mindset. Um, I, I play around a lot with YouTube and um, looking for information, learning about uh, nomad life. And uh, I'm coming across a lot of videos of these super duper big uh YouTube stars who surely have hundreds of thousands of followers and hundreds of videos and they're um, monetized and I'm, I'm none of that. I'm, I'm not monetized. I would love to be monetized. <clears throat> and that means I have to have, I don't know, 5,000 viewers or 5,000 subs and I need to have uh, 400 hours of view time, and I, I'm not even near that. I mean, you can see, I mean, as of today, I have like 70 subscribers. I'm not doing this to get rich, but if I could make a little bit of money off of this, it'd be super duper. So um, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. Please leave a comment. Um, I'd love to hear from you. I do reply to everybody currently because I'm not um, legendary and I can't I can <laughs> keep up with the three comments a month I get so um, get to the point Mitch will you uh, YouTube channels who um, are, are promoting their life on the road their van life their nomads videos <clears throat> they um, <clears throat> are now saying that everybody's quitting the RV life and it's not true it's not true. I haven't even gotten into the RV life, and I'm, and I'm thinking about it very seriously, and I'm researching it very seriously. But um, as soon as you see a video that you're interested in looking at, and then they they tell you something that might be off-putting to you, you you're gonna click on it because you want to. What the? What is that? What the, I gotta I gotta click on that. What is that? Oh, that's not what they really meant. You've been baited. That's clickbait. I don't do that in this channel. That's another reason to subscribe. I don't lie to you. 
I don't play games. So why is everybody not quitting RV life? Let's be serious about this. YouTubers are lying. It's clickbait. Click on my channel. Read this headline. Look, full-time nomadic living is a relatively new trend as far as social media goes. People have been doing it for many, many years. Some people have been doing it all of their lives. Some people do it because they have to do it because they can't afford to live any other way. They can't afford a house. They can't afford the rent. So they live out of their van or their car or their truck. I don't want to be in that demographic, but I don't want to be stuck in sticks and bricks owning a piece of dirt for the rest of my life and living there until I die. I, don't, I want to see some stuff. I want to go some places. I want to do some stuff. Is that okay? Is that okay with you? Of course it is. Don't be ridiculous. So, uh, if you have a home, let's get to the meat of this. If you have a home, try not to sell it. If you want to see what life is out like out on the road, why well, go get yourself a trailer or a camper and, and go experience it. Do it for a week. Do it for a month if you can. But, if you don't have a home, if you can't afford a home, some people have no other way to survive but living in their car or their truck or their van. So if you can test the waters before you uh, sell out, move out on the road, that'd be great. I don't know if I have that ability. I think I have to sell what I have to get the uh, living arrangements, RV, trailer, uh, camper that I want. So full-time with a home base, good. Not really full-time, is it, if you have a home base? I'm not here to debate that. I, I don't want to argue with that terminology. It's, it's either here nor there, as they say. And, and people do it for different reasons. Some people want to go see the country. Some people want to do some driveway camping at Uncle Ray's house in Redford. Or wherever Ray, Uncle Ray lives now. Some people do it because they have to. And people quit. They do quit. These younger couples out there, they're getting their little camper or their van and they're trying to live out of it. They're going out west to uh, Arizona to go see Bob Wells. Who's Bob Wells? Google it. You'll figure it out. He lives out there near Quartzsite, Arizona in his, I, know, I think it's a mail truck now. I'm not sure what he's living in, but he, he is famous. He's a legendary uh, full-time nomad. Uh, but, but people quit for different reasons. A young couple gets an RV, they go out, they go, ah, this sucks, this is not for me, I'm going to get out of this and go home and get a job. Go back to mom's house. I'm not going to go back to mom's house. Well, I might. I might go see her and visit. She probably would like that. But I don't want to live there. I want to go visit my brother in Pennsylvania. I want to go visit my nephew in Pennsylvania. I want to go visit Mikey in Georgia. He doesn't have a driveway. I, he lives in one of those uh, highfalutin neighborhoods where you can't just park an RV in the yard. So Mike, you know, I guess I'm sleep. Uh, you're going to have to scoot over in bed and we're going to have to, you know, put, a, put that piece of tape up the middle. Because <laughs> I know you, Mike. All right, let's move on. Um, so, yeah, you quit for different reasons and you RV for different reasons. And I got to scroll down my page here so I can look at my notes. Um, some people miss community living. They want to live in a community. I live in a community. Communities are way overrated. You've got next door neighbors with dogs. You've got next door neighbors with kids. You've got garbage in the neighborhood. You've got people who just don't take care of their stuff. You've got people telling you about their gods and their politics. And yeah, they got their flag waving, whatever it is. Sometimes it's a rainbow flag. Sometimes it's an Israel flag or a, you know, an American flag. I, look, I don't care about your cause. I don't care about your cause. Are you a good person? That's all that matters. And you don't get that with community. You get everybody's BS. And I, I'm over it. I'm over community. Are you over community? Maybe not. That's cool. Whatever. Um, how about this? People attempt to go full-time on the road with their children. Don't do that with your children. Your children should grow up in a community with other kids. They should be able to go see Grandma and Grandpa and Uncle Mike and Aunt Judy and, you know. If you're jamming them into a box and taking them out on the road, 
you probably are pulling a really big box because they got to have their devices. They got to have their little bicycles and tricycles and big wheels. They got to have their game consoles. They have to have their clothes. They have to have your school books because you're homeschooling. That's child abuse. Don't do that. Don't, don't take your kids on the road with you. Wait till they grow up or don't have any. Wear a condom. Did I just say that? <laughs> yeah, I did. Some people think, well, it's a confined space. Living in a confined space is, is difficult. I, well, I was just in a bed for several hours overnight. That was a pretty confined space. I got up, had to go to the bathroom. That little room's a pretty confined space. And not to mention this bag of bones. Just, just bones with a meat suit. I mean, you can't get any more confined than this, unless you're really fat. I'm getting there. <laughs> so... Confined spaces, we're, we all live in a confined space in one form or another. Uh, logistics, maintenance, big rigs, smaller rigs. Well, do I need to tell you that it's easier to pull a smaller rig than a big rig? That's why van lifers are pretty cool. I don't want to live in that small of a rig. And I want to have my tools. I want to be handy. I want to have my saws and my drills and, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, I want to be handier than the average bear. I, I, if something happens, I want to be able to fix it. If I have the opportunity to make a few bucks helping someone else, I want to be able to do that. So I want my tools. I don't want that much of a rig, though. I just want a small rig. Sleep, eat, watch a little laptop TV, uh, get some internet. Okay, internet. Let's talk about that. Well, internet is so expensive on the road. <laughs> They're trying to scare you. At home, in your little sticks and bricks place, or your big one, you've got cable. You've got internet. You've got a landline. Why do you still have a phone hanging on your wall in the kitchen? Stop it. You have a cell phone. Get rid of that. Stop the bundle. Pull the plug. Ugh. Internet. Internet. Cable. Television programming. Are you kidding me? When cable first came out, and it was before Dish, um, they billed it as commercial-free subscription television. That's what they called it, commercial-free subscription television. And you wanted to be the first one on the block to get it, so you got it. Look at me. I've got cable. You want to come over and watch some cable? we got MTV. We can watch uh, Dire Straits. Yeah, Dire Straits on MTV. I want my MTV. Money for nothing and your chicks for free. And then they started commercializing it. And then they started getting all the networks in on it. So you got the cable companies selling commercial. You got the network companies selling commercials. And then they have you giving them money to watch commercials. You're no longer watching subscription commercial-free television. You're not. You're paying them to watch commercials. They're triple dipping. Triple dipping. And you keep paying for it. And that's why the rates keep going up. <laughs> if you, if all the subscribers across the country stopped paying for cable television, you'd still get it for free. Because they're making boo bucks from advertisers. Those people you are paying to watch. You're paying to watch boner pill commercials. You're paying for that. Sorry, not cool, not fair, should be illegal. The old days, back in when I was a kid, you had to get up out of your chair and turn the TV on. And if you wanted to change the channel, and click, 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 click. And then you watch Johnny Carson for free. Sometimes you had to hold the antenna. It was free. And sometimes you just put a big antenna on the house and, and it was a really good picture. And it was free. Did I say I was going to have some coffee? Oh, baby, that's good coffee. So, cable TV, internet, you, do, you don't need cable TV. You don't. Your kids are spending more time with their game consoles or playing games on the internet. So buy internet. To get internet in your RV, okay, are you ready for this? Once you, once you buy all the equipment, you're going to spend about 150 bucks a month. How much are you paying for your home internet bundle? 
150, 200, 250, 300 a month. Even the internet should be free. Even the internet should be free. It's all a media where you buy stuff online. This, it should be free. It really should be free. They can't give away. To, do they even have telephones, wires uh, to, to, that you can... Or is it all VOIP? I don't know. All I know is technology. Our heads are in my, our... Whoo, um, because we're paying to watch commercials. Thanks, people. Thank you. I don't. I'm not going to. But thank you, everybody else, for screwing it up for everybody. Stop paying for cable. Stop paying for dish. Just get internet. All you need is internet. You can watch anything online without a subscription. HBO, Cinemax, Paramount, uh, all, the, all of these subscription channels. Really? You, you think you need that? Really? Stop it. Stop it. The cost of living on the road. RVs are expensive. They are expensive if you buy a new one and, and you have to maintain them. Oh my God, the cost to maintain an RV. Have you ever put a roof on a house? I got a friend of mine right now. He's $18,000 to put a roof on an average size roof. $18,000. Not cool. All right. That's on a house. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. I just get a little passionate once in a while. You ever put a new hot water tank in in your house? How about uh, a, a new deck? How about a, a pool? Gotta have a pool. How about that motorcycle? Hey dude, you gotta get your motorcycle and then you gotta get a trailer so you can tow it to the bike week. Shouldn't you just drive your bike to bike week? Uh, how about the kitchen remodel or the bathroom remodel? How about the, the new landscaping you gotta have? All the stuff that you spend in your house, at your home, your sticks and bricks, you're going to tell me that's cheaper than living in an RV on the road? Come on. Why is everybody not quitting RVing? Because RVing is cool. Life on the road is cool. <laughs> Actually, I can drive this place. I'm going to I'm just going to get the steering wheels right here. It's just off camera. You ever heard a house honk a horn? <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> so, yeah, if you buy a house, you're going to be in your house. If you're my age and you're just paying the rent because you need a place to live, that's where you're going to die. You're going to die there. You're going to you're going to pay money to live in a house till you die. Does that sound appealing? I don't know. I want to go to that big corn place out west where the or uh, maybe see the Grand Canyon. How about that? Would that be cool? I, I'd like to I'd like to go to the desert. I've never been to the desert. How about uh, Florida? How about Georgia? How about the Florida Georgia line? Twang, twang. That's a band, actually, Florida. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, maintenance is maintenance. Whether you're doing it home or doing it in an RV, it's probably a little cheaper in an RV. Uh, so if you're going to live in an RV park, if you want to go from park to park, I want to go to this state park. They have nice showers. I want to go to this state park. I want to go to this state park. You're going to pay 30 40 bucks a night or more, depending on the size of the site, the hookup, the rig you got. Do you want to do that? I don't. I don't want to do that. I want to do some driveway camping. I'd like to do some boondocking. What the heck is that? Well, that's when you go camping without electricity, without plumbing. So you either poop in a bucket or in the woods with the uh, Yogi and the Boo Boo. Or, you know, you, you get yourself a bucket with a toilet seat on it. So you can, you know, be a human. Because that's how we... Coffee can. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, the boondocking, boondocking is cool. Especially if you can do it near a lake or a pond or a river or something like that. God, it's so romantic. I'm getting excited. Woo, stop that. We're getting on 20 minutes here, so I got to wrap this up because I'm probably boring the crap out of you. So you, you got to put a roof on the house, hot water tank in the house. You got a pool, a deck, a motorcycle, vacations. Oh, vacations. We didn't talk about vacations. You got to go on vacation. If you're... A full-time nomad? You're on vacation, kind of. Look, you can stay in a park. Pick one. Contact the park. Say, I would like to do some camp hosting. And you can stay there for a month or two or three. For free. For free. You pick up some garbage. You clean out some fire pits. You greet people and show them around the park. Whatever you got to do. But it's free. And you're in a campground. In your RV. Enjoying your life instead of waiting to die in your home. The cost, there's ways to defer the cost of living in an RV on the road. You can do that. If you can afford to keep your home, do it. 
I don't think I can, so I'm probably not going to do it. Don't want to. Dude, I'm getting old. I'm 60 years old, and how, how, many, how old is, do people live? My dad, I think he made it to 89 or something. Mom is still kicking. Mom's still kicking. She's, I think, 87. Um, I got two older brothers. They're barely kicking. <laughs> like their brother. Barely kicking. But how do you want to go out? How do you want to go out? That's my question. You got to live your best life. You got to do what you want to do. Don't do what society tells you to do. I got caught. I got caught in that, uh, that society thing for most of my life. I uh, had a family, raised kids, uh, got divorced, lost everything twice. <laughs> so it's time for me. It's some me time now. Can I afford it? No. Am I going to do it? Yeah, probably. I'm not going to buy a house. It's nearly impossible. I looked around our area here in northern Michigan, you're not finding anything under $300,000. A, a patch of plant, just a little patch of dirt would be nice. Maybe with, with some electricity, maybe a septic, you know, tank. That'd be great. Park my camper there, live there for a few months, go to my the friends, my relatives, go actually on vacation somewhere and, and, and visit parts of the country I have never seen before. That's That's, why is everybody not quitting the RV life. Why? Why? The only reason you may think they are is because YouTubers are lying to you. They're lying to you. Simply lying to you. I'm not going to do that. Please subscribe to my channel. Please. I would like to get more than 70 viewers or subscribers. That'd be great. You mind? Would that be cool? Could you do that for me? Just hit the subscribe button and then forget about me if you want. Or if you like this kind of stuff, ring the bell if you know what all that lingo means. And then you'll get notified whenever I come out with a great new channel. Because I'm a content creator. Stay tuned for more great videos here on my YouTube channel. Peace out, people. Uh, thanks for coming by. No, I was just pausing there for a second. I gotta go now. See, if I close my eyes, it's like I left.